Then there's some tattoo artists today who say, well, I'm booked up for three weeks. I said, no, you're not booked up for three weeks, buddy. They own your ass for three weeks. So I never would work by private appointment. How do you get a tattoo by you? I said, you know, there's a sign on the door with the hours. I'd recommend they're getting there early, but I'm not making an appointment with you because nobody's owning my ass. I'm a product of timing, 100%, I feel. I didn't get there for my great artistic talents. I mean, Janice did more for tattooing than anything else. I mean, in concerts with thousands of people in the stadium, she would hold up her tattoo and tell the crowd that anybody got tattooed like to fuck a lot. Well, Madison Avenue could not write better copy than that. Because all the goddamn retardos, which I'm talking about the human race, the great unwashed out there, said, oh man, I like the fuck a lot, so I need a tattoo. I was enamored with Janis Joplin, and I knew that she had a little red heart on her chest, so Michael was like, okay, you know, we have, I want a tattoo. I, what do you want? What do you want? And I said, well, give me a little red heart on my ankle. One of the uh, pivoting events in there uh, was uh, when Janis Joplin, who was adored by the young people and the, the hip crowd, uh, got tattooed. Uh, Lyle Tuttle did it. Uh, with that, Lyle became famous. Well, every time I'm credited with helping popularize it, I sort of feel ashamed of myself. And I'm saying that not in jest, but in a way of really ruining a um, outsider art to make it an inside art. I, I found it a lot more charming years ago. I remember he bought me and Bill Eason lunch in Puerto Rico, and we almost had a fucking heart attack because he ain't bought nobody shit. That's a, you know, if anybody knows Lyle, he doesn't really spend a lot of money. <laughs> well, not his own. <laughs> he spends everybody else's. But he bought us lunch, and we almost had, we're like, dude, ain't nobody here to fucking know you bought us lunch because they ain't going to believe us. So, we love you, Lyle. <laughs> when I was around 18 or 19, I tried to get a job with Dennis Dwyer, and he told me just to get the fuck out of his shop. And I was like, okay, cool, you know? And then, like 20 years later, he's like, why aren't you ever coming for a job? I'm like, Dennis, I did, and you told me to get the fuck out of your shop, you know? It was very secretive in, in, in the old days, and people didn't want to, um tell you anything some uh, people you worked for even when you needed supplies or whatever they would get it for you they wouldn't give you the address of the supplier because they feared that you know if you got this knowledge then you'd get your own stuff and then you'd open up down the street and of course little did they know you know how it is these days I mean there's it's it's almost like there's a tattoo shop on every corner and it was never supposed to be like that I mean I remember early on I couldn't find somebody to rent a spot for me you know, and now you go to a, uh, you go to the mall, the big shopping mall, you know, and and there's a tattoo shop there. There's one in Albuquerque, right at the shopping mall, and I'm you know it blows my mind. I I go to little towns. It used to be that you needed, you know, at least several hundred thousand people in a town to support one tattoo shop. I go to places now that. The population can't be a thousand people and they got a damn tattoo shop. You know, sometimes I get sick of seeing them. I was like, oh God, not here too, you know. In the old days, we tried to um, make tattooing more respectable, more acceptable, but it got way out of hand and, and now it's just too acceptable and I don't know about respectable, but, uh, you know, it, it, it's, it's become, you know, way too popular and it was it was more like an I don't know underground thing almost back in the day an, an outlaw thing uh, a blue collar thing you know it was you know it's it's lost a lot of its uh, charm now that it's big and you have high production studios owned by people that would even get a tattoo I think uh, 
I'll be honest with you, I think that's going to eventually die. And these people, uh, Brian Everett, Jack Rudy, uh, they'll be fine. But I think the industry is going to kind of die like disco a little bit, in my opinion. But the ones who really are craftsmen and artisans who really pushed, they'll be fine. I grew up on a very poor farm in Salt Lake City, Utah. We didn't have running water or anything like that until I was 11 years old. And my uncle was a, um, a long distance truck driver. And he had these tattoos on his arms. He had a black panther. And then he had a, a rose with a dagger through it. And to me, they, when I was listening to his stories, I realized that he got those on the highways. I remember thinking, these are symbols of adventure and of freedom. They were like travel stamps. And I just, I was mesmerized by them. I first started out of uh, my mom's apartment, out of my bedroom. Um, I like my beginnings because I wasn't motivated by money. I really had a love for drawing and painting. It was a hobby for me to create. You know, it made me feel good. And I was kind of like an introvert. Um, and, you know, naturally, you know, uh, tattoos are kind of an extroverted thing. So I guess that was my little way of uh, getting out of my shell. One of my first influences was uh, this guy named Iwo Jima Eddy. He was an old, grouchy old dude, you know, the typical tattooist back then, and uh, it was pretty cool, you know. We'd go in there, me and my homeboys, every, you know, Sunday we'd go watch a movie uh, at the theater like everyone did, you know, matinee, and uh, it was on the way. It was like two blocks away from uh, the theater. We'd go in there and, uh, you know, check out the naked girl pictures in there, you know, with the little dots covering up the key points, you know. And uh, it was pretty cool, you know. Uh, most of the time he'd chase us out, you know, but uh, sometimes he'd just ignore us and we could watch him tattoo for a while. And, you know, these guys with these big battleships on their chest and these just all kinds of cool hula girls and all that traditional stuff, you know. As I got older, you know, I loved it, you know, but, you know, I didn't have no idea that I'd ever become a tattoo artist or even think I could, you know. I started hanging out at tattoo shops, you know, and back then you didn't just walk in and say, hey, I want an apprenticeship, you know, with your, your little portfolio. You hung out and you scrubbed tubes and you did whatever it was you could do just to hang around there uh, until one day they decided that, you know, you had enough artwork or you spent enough time scrubbing tubes. And this was back in, 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 in their shop, the, the bathroom was about, four by four, you know, and the sink was, was tiny, and, and, you know, we'd stay there till two, three in the morning scrubbing tubes, because you didn't scrub just one art, you scrubbed the whole shop. So you used pipe cleaners and clean tubes all night, and uh, finally they were like, hey, you want to learn? So I was like, yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot more difficult than it is today. We had to pay our dues, basically. Nowadays, these motherfuckers, man, their mama pays for their, because they can draw, they'll, they'll open a shop because their mama gave them money, or their daddy, or whatever, and a fuck, and then, wow, they got there's 10,000 stores. I see a lot of people out there that have absolutely no business being in the tattoo community. They have no idea. They have no uh, artistic ability. They have no desire to be a great tattoo artist. They're not going to add anything to the culture of tattooing. They just want to make a quick dollar. That's the, the, the biggest change is just how easy it is to get in the business. I mean, people were stingy with, with knowledge, and this is even in 89 when I started, you know. And like I said, I, luckily I became friends with, with some people and I did that, kind of had to do it through modesty. You just kind of hung out, you know, and would talk. And then uh, people like, you know, Gil Monty, I mean, they just, they just didn't, they, they were just abusive to, you know. So, and if you tried to roll in like, hey, I'm the man and look what I'm doing, you, you just got put down quick. So you just kind of hung out and eventually these guys, you know, you became friends with them, but it, 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 took, it took quite some time. Well, the internet is fucking things up royally, you know, because it's just, too much cross knowledge, information, you can find out anything. There's a lot of debate about what's happening in tattooing right now. A lot of debate about people selling out, a lot of debate about corporations and people who aren't involved in tattooing getting involved in tattooing. You know, obviously media exposure is huge in all of this. And everybody says, and they have said since I began, this is the end of tattooing and nobody's going to get tattoos anymore, and it, this is the end of our business. Oh my God, the, the end of days have come, you know? And then it just keeps exploding.